The former world cruiserweight champion Glenn McCrory is now trying to build up to what he hopes will be a fight for the WBC international cruiserweight title against the holder, fellow Brit, Carl Thompson. And Glenn has been over in the States trying to get some useful prep work done. He's also had to suffer the inconvenience of a late change of opponent in his latest fight. Here is the opponent, Mark Young. This is a heavyweight who's been in with some of the great heavyweights in the world, including Tyson and Foreman, so he'll know a few tricks. His overall career record, 13 victories in 32 fights. He's stopped eight opponents, but he'll know plenty of tricks, and he's sure to be a hard man for Glenn to shift. McCrory then, the former IBF cruiserweight world champion, now fighting at cruiserweight for the third time, very experienced, 37 fights, and an excellent record, 12 knockouts only, perhaps the only blemish, the downside of Glenn's career so far, but he's still filled with determination to make a mark at cruiserweight on the world scene. Let's see how it goes then, conceding a lot of weight to a durable opponent in Young. Colin Hart joining Ian Dark this time in the commentary box for the highlights. Referee is Richard Steele, who's been involved in some big fights, like the Tyson Ruddock fights. And that controversial finish where he stopped Meldrick Taylor with two seconds to go against Julio Cesar Chavez. Glenn McCrory giving away the best part of two stone here, Colin Hart. Yeah, the folks back home may not know this, but believe it or not, Young's nickname is Starby. He looks part of Starby to me. He looks blubbery, in fact, doesn't he? Very blubbery. As we said, he's fought a lot of big names, but he's lost to all of them. But really, it's a cruiserweight against a full-blown heavy here. Yeah, full-blown super heavy. But, you know, Ian, as we always say, when you get two big men in the ring and they start swinging, anything can happen. Well, I think when Young comes out here, he's going to go give it a go to begin with anyway and see if he can shake up Glenn McCrory. It's Glenn's job really to keep out of trouble and just do enough to discourage this man who doesn't look really in the shape for a long distance fight. Well, he, to be fair to him, he did come in at very late notice. Before he turned down three previous opponents before he accepted this man. Jab from Young, going through, he's plenty experienced enough. Well, when you see the list of uh, people he's been in with, like Tyson and company, he's not going to be scared of McCrory, that's for sure. He's boxed in Britain a couple of times as well. Gary Mason beat him in five rounds, and Derek Williams in four in the mid-80s. All Glenn should do is to keep sticking that left jab in uh, Young's face to discourage it. Glenn McCrory trying to rediscover the glory times. I had a few conversations with him, obviously. We've worked together so many times, and he said he felt, once he'd retired, that he'd become a bit of a slob, to use his own words, and he wanted to get back in training and try to rediscover the threads of his boxing career. And he's still young enough to do that. And he's much, much happier at cruiserweight these days with a nutritionist who sorted out his diet, Liz Woods. Yeah, I just realised I'm sitting in his chair, aren't I? <laughs> He'll let you, don't worry. Let's hope he's fit enough to take it over again sometime. It's a big man he's in with here, and if Young does connect, McCrory can certainly know all about it. Yeah, what Glenn's got to do is hit and hop it. So far, so good from Glenn McCrory, using his jab quite well and boxing a smart fight. So an obvious mismatch in terms of size, but McCrory's going to need all his experience to get through this fight. Let's rejoin it now in round three. Corey trying to 
Fox's way. <laughs> Success here. That's the combinations together as well. And he mustn't get careless with this man. The danger, really, from McCrory's point of view, is that Young will start to fancy the night's work. And also the danger is that Glenn mustn't get it into his head that he, he should knock this man out. Just keep to his boxing. That's all he's got to do. It's the main point for him, really, at this stage, is not to lose. I very well remember uh, covering Rory's professional debut in London nine years ago. And, uh, we said then that he, he was a, an extremely good prospect. Uh, now, he didn't make it as a heavyweight, but at least he won a world title at Cruiserweight. Just not young Scumshaw out of too. Three, two, one. Yeah, you're going to have to take time out here because it's the rule that the Gumshaw is now washed out for hygiene purposes. So he won't be too disappointed about that. Mark Young is breathing very heavy. He's got a, an extra period of rest. McCrory getting in those combinations that were his trademark in those thunderous nights when he was a world champion up in the northeast, beating the likes of Patrick Lamomba and Cesar Macatini. Yes, they were exciting occasions and the crowd used to go mad up there. Great favourite in his uh, up in Georgia Land. Young is still very much in there pitching. Manzal at the back to work for this, and he's got four, a couple of little shots to the head there. He's starting to get through himself now. This is good for McCrory. Under fire. Young. This is the best spell of the fight for Glenn McCrory. Reigning in the punches, looking to break the will and the spirit of this giant facing him. Young is still countering off the ropes. Good round for McCrory that. He really did some excellent work in the last minute of the round. It's proving a tough night's work for Glenn McCrory against Mark Young. McCrory, remember, giving away almost two stone in weight. Tall order for any fighter. There are two rounds to go. Glenn trying to stay out of trouble and keep his comeback on the rails. I don't think McCrory's ever been seriously hurt, has he, here? Well, not... Uh, I mean, we can't feel the punches that he's taken, but uh, he hasn't given the impression of being, uh, of being hurt or in any distress at any time. Two rounds remaining. Young has been around long enough to know that he is, in all probability, a long way behind on points. And increasingly, he'll be looking for one big humdinger to turn it all around. It happens. Oh, the most famous one, perhaps, is uh, we go against Tate. 54 seconds of the 15th round left, and Weaver cut the fight out of the by knocking Tate out with a, with a right hand that was unbelievable. Knocked him cold before he hit the deck. And that's why Glenn McCrory has got to keep on concentrating, and the corner is shouting at him, keep on revolving round to your right. That is away from the right hand. Yeah. A bit worried that he might walk onto a right if he circulates in the other direction. It's a tough old fight for him. He uh, hasn't gone 10 rounds since he KO'd 
Cesar Macatini in 1989. Now, another timeout. Again, the gum shield comes out. That must be what, four times? At least, yeah. Now, you see what he's doing uh, when he's taking the point. Uh, uh, now, he, now he, he believes that Young deliberately got rid of the gum shield there. That's exactly the point we were making earlier and exactly the point Colin Hart was making as well. And the point is deducted. We also have telepathy at ringside, occasionally. Uh, we just, we're just old and we've seen, seen so many. Not so much of the old, please, Colin. So I'll, I'll speak for myself. That was a right man for the young. That's what uh, McCory's got to watch. Yeah, go to work, Lenny. He wants to rest. Go to work. Come on. And they're shouting now at McCory to up the tempo a little bit because they sense that Young is running out of gas fast. Well, I'll be surprised now if he doesn't last to the final ball. There's not been too many signs that there's going to be a, a knockout. I think it was the third round where McCrory did have that big finish. Might have been the second. I can't honestly remember earlier on. I mean, it looked like he might stop Young, but there have been precious few other occasions. Yeah, I think it was going to be stopped at all because of exhaustion. But he's stuck, he stuck it well, Young. Passing it out, passing it out. What is it they say in the old cliches? He can, uh, he can come again. And uh, promoters will be pleased enough that he's giving McCrory some rounds, at least giving some value for his purse. Come on. Enjoy. Going like a train, looking good, son. Come on. Hands tight all the time. Oh, you come on, let's go. Ah, you're looking good, they're telling him. They're even getting into the American lingo now. This is the last round. Touch gloves. McCrory, we think, well ahead on points. And oh. probably just needs to stay out of trouble now. Young will probably with uh, increasing desperation. Just hope he can find one punch from the locker room somewhere. doesn't start really getting involved in any wars at this late stage. Don't stand there with him, Glenn. A crowd trying to get behind the American. Use your feet, Glenn, side to side. Remember how Frank Bruno was right in charge against Bone Crusher Smith and uh, Elected to mix it a wee bit in the last round and paid the full penalty. I'm not saying McCrory's going to do that here, but um, lesson, lessons are to be learned, of course. Yeah, Young is no gun crusher Smith. <laughs> and McCrory is much longer in the tooth than Bruno was then. And he's just trying to stay out of trouble now. Dance, jab, move. It's the professional thing to do. They didn't put the purse up for, bra for bravado. In fact, if you lose, they put it down sometimes for the next fight. Well, because it would be a disaster for us to lose yeah. this one against this man. Well, that's what Nicky Duck's always saying, isn't it? About the snakes are very long in boxing and the ladder's short. Yes. Yes, one it's not like a soccer team. We can uh, lose a game and then win the next five. And quite successfully soccer. Now the gun shields come out again. You can't believe it, can you, really? Well, his he, mouth's sagging open and it's obviously an ill-fitting mouthpiece. But I don't think he's doing it on purpose. Richard Steele clearly did in the last no, round, he didn't he? in the last round, that's true. Yes, he, he just ran out of patience with the whole thing. Now there's another time out. Yeah. Now what is he going to do this time? Now he, did, he didn't spit it out that time. It was clear, I think. Uh, let's get on with this, says Richard Steele. Come on, come on, 
right hand 15 seconds to go and unless the judges have been reading a rather good thriller while this has been going on they must give it to McCrory surely there's the bell to end it <laughs> he thinks he's won it I think Young knows he's won it the crowd know and um, all we do is await confirmation they're happy I think some of the American crowd were too taken with Glenn McCrory's performance there, but I think they're wrong. I thought that was a yeah, sound performance wrong. from him, really. Yes, it was, but the Americans, of course, like more explosive uh, boxing. Okay, let's uh, let's hear how that fight was scored. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a majority decision. Uh, sorry, a unanimous decision. Judge Hauk scores 97-91. Judge Moretti scores 96-92. Judge Cicilino scores 99-89 for the winner, Glenn McCrory. Not really a spectacular performance, but nonetheless, Glenn McCrory will be glad to get that fight under his belt in the build-up to a really important title fight. In a moment or two, one of Britain's brightest amateur stars of recent years now trying to realise his dreams among the professionals, Adrian Dodson.